In our final video, we'll be looking at chains of relationships and looking at these where rates are involved. So far, pretty much everything we've done has involved relating one quantity itself to another. In this video, we look at the situation where equations relate a rate with one or more other rates. Often we call these problems related rates problems. And generally, or a lot of the time with the, the types that we'll be looking at, they involve time-dependent quantities, although other possibilities exist as well. So for example, we might look at the rate at which the water height in a water tanker drops being related to the rate at which the water is released from the tanker itself. So we can see how we can solve these problems, and we're going to do that by working on a couple of examples. Our first example, we've got a snowball that's melting such that its volume decreases at a given rate, 2 cubic centimetres per minute. We're asked to find the rate, so the result here is going to be a rate, not just some quantity. We need to find the rate at which the radius is decreasing, so the rate of change of the radius, when the given radius is 3 centimetres. And we're given an extra little bit of information to recall that the volume of a sphere, we're going to assume that the snowball is a sphere, is given by 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So maybe pause the video for a minute and reread that question just so you've got it straight in your head. Okay, so we're given that the volume is a function of the radius. So V is a function of R. What we're asked to find is the rate at which the radius is decreasing. So we're actually told to find dr dt, the rate of change of the radius. That's what we're trying to find. How do we get from there to there? Well, we know V is a function of R. We're also told that the volume is decreasing at a rate of some volume per minute. So we're also told that V is a function of time. So implicitly in there we need to draw out that V depends on R and R depends on T. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to get a dr dt. So we've got some sort of chain relationship going on here. Now if you remember back to the chain rule of differentiation it tells us that in this sort of situation V a function of R a function of T then the chain rule says dv dt is dv dr by dr dt. And we're going to have to use that somehow. And the way we're going to go about that is to note that we're actually looking for dr dt. So we're going to rearrange that to get an expression dr dt will be equal to dv dt divided by dv dr. And that's going to be our main equation here to try to solve this problem. So we're given in the question, or you might just know, that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that tells us the derivative of v with respect to r is going to be 4 thirds times 3 is just 4 pi r squared. So we've got one of those parts for our relationship up here. We've got dv dr. But we're also told in the question uh, that... From the question, we're told that dv dt is equal to 2 cubic centimetres per minute. So we've actually got both the pieces of information we need to find dr dt. So we have dr dt is equal to 2 cubic centimetres per minute divided by 4 pi r squared. Pi r squared, we're actually looking at the specific case where the radius is 3 centimetres. So we can just pop that straight in. 3 squared centimetres squared. Sorry, we can chuck that in there as well. 3 centimetres is our radius, and it's going to be squared. So if we evaluate that, we're going to have two by uh, 3 squared is 9, by 4 is 36. 1 on 36 sorry, 2 on 36, 2 on 36 pi. It's going to cancel with our centimetres there, and we'll have centimetres per minute, which sounds like a good rate of change for uh, radius, centimetres per minute. So 2 on 36 pi. So we can answer our question by saying that the rate at which the radius is decreasing is 1 on 36 pi centimetres per minute. I think that answers our question fairly well. You might be wondering about uh, negatives in there, but 
it's, we're given in the question that the volume is decreasing at a rate of 2 so we've implicitly there said that decreasing is a positive value so positive value for 2 there ending up with a positive value here it's still a decrease uh, because of the way we've assigned positive and negative quantities so that's our rate of decrease for the radius let's just find out uh, check out one more final example before we finish this up and this time we've got a rectangular swimming pool 18 meters by 8 meters being filled with water at a given rate and we're asked how fast so we're asked to find a rate how fast is the height changing or how fast is the height rising actually so let's have a look at this one so I'm just going to start off with a quick sketch a rectangular swimming pool 18 meters by 8 meters and a height h which is obviously going to be changing because we're filling the swimming pool so h changes with time and that's important we can write that over here h is a function of time now the volume of the pool the volume at any point in time will depend on the height so we're going to have 18 by 8 by whatever the height is 18 by 8 by h that gives us 144 h so that's the volume as a function of height height is changing so the volume is actually a function of height which is itself a function of time so we've got a chain rule relationship going and we note that we're asked to find how fast is the height of the water rising so in other words we're trying to find dh dt so dh dt is our unknown quantity I can see here I could get a dvdh from this relationship uh, I see in the question I'm got filled with water at a rate of that looks like a volume change with respect to time so it looks like a dv dt a dv dh and we're asked for a dh dt there so let's see what the chain rule would tell us given this sort of chain relationship we'd have dv dt is dv dh by dh dt well that looks like all the things i need there dh dt is the unknown dv dh i can get from this relationship and dv dt that's given there in the question okay so let's have a look at that now jumping over onto the next slide with dv dt equal to dv dh by dh dt I can rearrange that to get our quantity that we want dh dt is dv dt over dv dh by rearranging this equation we're told that dv dt is one cubic meter per minute and we've also got that dv dh if we remember v is equal to 144 h 144 h dv dh will be just 144 so we've got 144 and that's going to be meters squared so we end up with one on 144 meters squared pencil with the cube and leave us with meters per minute for the height change so just to finish it off write it out in the full sentence the height is rising at a rate of 1 on 144 meters per minute and that's the answer to our problem okay so that's basically it for our videos on derivatives uh, make sure you can go and try out some of these problems on the worksheets and that's it